Hey, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, what's in store for your May? 2023, we're gonna dive in with the tarot and find out, so keep watching. All right, Scorpio, let's see what's going on for your month ahead. We're gonna start first with this tarot deck and get the overall energetic vibe. And then we're gonna dive in with another Oracle deck with tarot clarification and an Oracle card at the end as well. Big lunar eclipse in your sign on May 5th. I will do a separate video for that. I probably am gonna do that video for all 12 signs because it is such an intense eclipse. And it is the last one in your sign for quite a while. Um, so I think it's, an, it's a really an important karmic, uh, karmic wrap-up eclipse. So stay tuned for that. I'm also going to be publishing two videos on Jupiter and Taurus. So, you know, definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of the exciting stuff coming up. We have the Page of Cups for you. The Ten of Swords, the Eight of Swords, the Devil, and the Four of Pentacles. You're getting yourself on solid ground this month. Okay, you're going to get yourself on solid ground when it comes to leaving the past behind. Some sort of toxic scenario, whether business or personal, with a relationship. We'll break it all down. Let's see what's on the bottom. The Ten of Pentacles. Okay, I like this for you. Okay. All right. I'm not necessarily reading this in order. Um, I'm just, I'm kind of looking at all the energies holistically, but, um, you know, we have a ton of swords over here and you can see this one is where everybody's poking at her head with bobby pins. That's what it, <laughs> that's what it looks like to me. Um, now Mercury is retrograde in your seventh house of partnerships currently. Uh, so the past may indeed, people from the past, even if it's just memories, it may be, yes, literal phone calls and texts, but it also can just be memories are poking at your brain uh, from the past. And we have that also with the Page of Cups here. There can be uh, nostalgia, you know, yearning, uh, romantic daydreams, yearnings, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, wish that had been different, especially since it's next to the Ten of Swords. Um but your heart knows the truth, Eight of Swords. You're still maybe dealing with the last bits here. I'm going to leave my Four of Pentacles and Ten of Pentacles over here. You're dealing with the last bits of processing and cycling through and not getting stuck back in a web of secrets and lies and deceit and drama. But it may in fact be be luring you in the page of cups whether like i said literally through somebody contacting you or just in your own head space you're going down that rabbit hole you're getting stuck in that web again of the eight of swords getting your mind to the point where you know you're fixated and obsessed with why didn't this work out um i would be very i mean this this is a karmic chapter of wrapping things up. And again, this doesn't have to be a personal relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be some old boss who's trying to lure you back in and, uh, you know, get you to work for them or whatever. OK, there there is something here where it's it's a toxic. It's a toxic situation with this page of cups, devil, ten of swords, eight of swords. And the person knows that there's definitely like some sort of manipulation situation going on here. Um, but I think, you know, again, the point of the, the astrology energies and also what's showing up here for me with these things over here is that, you know, you're going to reground yourself and recalibrate and get to the other side uh, and get to a place where you're going to invest your energies into more stable situations, more profitable situations, mutually beneficial not just you doing the one who, you know, being the one who's doing all the giving all the time. So this is, you have to watch out for this. You know, this eclipse is in your sign. It's opposite Uranus, which is, um, you know, in your seventh house of relationships. Mercury's retrograde in your seventh house of relationships. Um, 
like I said to Taurus, uh, which their video was about kind of positioning themselves for the future benefits of Jupiter coming into their sign. The same thing applies here, I think, to you about you getting yourself in position for a solid new relationship or business partner, a solid new connection that you can count on. That's going to bring bring the benefits, the four of pentacles, ten of pentacles, rather than wasting your beautiful energy still stuck in the past with, with a situation that is just not good for you, even if you're just stuck in daydreams about it and obsessing about it. <sighs> Wrap it up, Scorpio. Wrap it up. Okay, get yourself aligned with the new. Okay, this is our Capricorn energy here, the Ten of Pentacles. This is about long-term future investments. This also, to me, a Ten of Pentacles is somebody who you can count on. They are solid. They are marriage material, whether it's a business marriage or, you know, romantic marriage. They, they got what it takes. They bring stuff to the table. Again, it's not just about you being the one doing everything all the time. Okay, so... This is, this is very good. If you've been wondering why, I mean, here's another possibility. If you've been wondering why something might've been blocked, I mean, there's, again, it's a general reading, you know, but one of the reasons why either, you know, a profitable business partnership or a solid relationship has not quite materialized yet for you, a possible reason is because of this shenanigan going on over here. There's still, you know, this page of cups, this Pisces energy, there's still this perhaps romantic fantasy idea that somehow magically it might get fixed. And, you know, the thing is Scorpio sometimes will never admit that, not even to themselves. I mean, you know, maybe deep within you're like, yeah, I kind of, I am still kind of in that place. Nobody else, and you'd be like, oh, no, that person, I don't want to back. Like, talking to a friend, whatever. No, no, no. But inside, you know, in certain moments, if you really are honest with yourself, you're like, you know, darn it, yes, I, I wish they, it, it would be magic if they would come back and it would be healed and magically transformed. This is wishful thinking energy, I think. Sometimes Page of Cups can be. It's, it's not always realistic. So... And that's what's going on here. And it and it can get triggering if somebody cannot contact Mercury retrograde. Contacts you from your past. Sever it. Get it done. You have this beautiful look at this gorgeous. This is our Taurus energy. This is where Jupiter is going to be occupying for the next year. You have some of the best energy. I've said this so many times on the channel. Write it down. Think about it. Make it happen. Between the middle of May to the middle of July with North Node still in that seventh house of destined partnerships and also Jupiter showing his big butt up there soon <laughs> as of May 16th. These next couple months could really, really be amazing for you to call in someone new. But again, we can act as our own worst enemies when we are not fully mentally available and emotionally available. So that is the thing. Make yourself available to this and that full moon lunar eclipse in your sign on may 5th is absolutely a time marker for yes make myself available what do i gotta do and you know the other possibility here this could just be something this could just be you it doesn't mean the person's coming back this could just be your own um I don't want to keep saying the word toxic, but your your own tendency, your own your own unhealthy tendency to keep yourself stuck in the past. Because when we finally admit that there is no going back, then we do have to take responsibility and make a plan for our future. All right. Let's see what else is going on in the Scorpio world. We have have confidence. Okay. Moving forward does not necessarily require you to have confidence in yourself. Confidence in God is enough. This is angel deck, so there's some God stuff. 
along with knowing that God works through you and with you in all ways. Lean upon us, the angels, if your confidence wavers and we will buoy your courage and faith. Everything's a metaphor with all these. So have confidence that you can release this to the past and call in something magnificent. All right, let's see what we need to know about this. You know, and the other thing with the, the confidence word, Con means with, the prefix. The fidens part, the rest of it, has ties in etymology, like where the word comes from, the origin, to the word fidelity, which means loyalty. So have the loyalty to yourself that you're going to leave the past behind and you're not, you know, you're not going to get suckered into, into something else, right? Okay? All right. Let's see what we need to know about this. Have confidence. Have confidence, Scorpio. You're gonna be moving forward. You're getting unstuck from this. I mean, this is this is you know, you want to put yourself in the position. Five of Swords. Ace the wands, there you're moving forward, and there's your energy, the Pluto, and the princess of swords. There you go. It's a mental game. This is the thing. We have the, you know, the eight of swords, the ten of swords that are showing up with this devil. Be faithful and loyal to yourself. Shift out of this. Okay. We have a five of swords. Again, look at how in this deck the guy is, is stuck there. And he looks like, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's fun to like shift around and use different decks. I haven't used this deck in a while. And something told me, it was Mercury Retrograde, right? So I was like, mm, let me use a deck from the past that I haven't used in a while. You can see he... Again, I'm not trying to be, you know, weird or offensive or anything, but it, he really looks like almost like a sacrifice there, right? Like he is, he looks like there's a pentagram there. It's a little, this card's a little creepy, I think. This deck is a little, you know, it's a little out there in a couple of cards, but um, I do like the deck. It's it's interesting. But, you know, again, with this confidence and, and being loyal to yourself, don't sacrifice yourself to somebody else's agenda. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated, to stay stuck in the past. Like, look at the barren wasteland this place is. Somebody is taking up rent and space in your head. It's time to, to kick them to the curb. Absolutely. Or some situation, it could just be a situation, right? It doesn't have to be a person. And you're going to do it. Look what we got here. We got this Ace of Wands and we have the, the Death card. So this could be timed. I'm going to give you two timings of when this may occur. This could be, again, timing around your lunar eclipse. But this could also be when Mars goes into Leo, which is on the 20th. Uh, you could, you know, absolutely just say enough is enough, particularly if you're dealing maybe with 10th house stuff like a career situation which leo is your 10th house of career it could be that you're just you know gonna make that decision and move in an entirely new direction and leave it in the past once and for all but again this is your energy you're in charge of making this this happen so have confidence in yourself that you can take an inspired leap of faith forward with this ace of wands this is a very interesting interesting reading yeah i mean this is also your second house of money so for some of you i'm going to do a separate money career and business reading for may as usual but and because we have the money showing up here as well this really could have something to do also with aligning yourself with the right people, seventh house, in order to have the loyalty in yourself, around you, etc., to manifest some money and a better career situation. 
So there could be, you know, something going on there as well, where there's a, a toxic situation in the work environment with this. It's been going on a long time, whatever that is. Okay, but this could also be your key here, some sort of key to freedom that you are not continuing to sacrifice yourself anymore to some sort of, you know, toxic work environment and your freedom card is coming. Your, you know, your way out to greater financial stability and also long-term growth with your finances uh, by manifesting some sort of new opportunity for yourself. So that's another possibility with these energies because we also have the princess of swords down here on the bottom, which is about some important news coming in. So... I'm going to say probably by, I'm thinking, Taurus, definitely by, I would say, the Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. I don't have that exact date in my mind on my fingertips, but uh, there you'll hear the news. There's, if it's something job related, I think, with breaking loose and cutting yourself loose from some sort of toxic job situation. Okay, but the, but this is this is a very interesting reading. I mean, it's a little heavy. The readings, I mean, the energy this month really gets better after the sixteenth for everybody. Uh, and I have so far the readings I've been doing, they are a little heavy for everybody. That's okay. Uh, it's not always the sunshine and roses. Sometimes we got to clear things out in our lives. Absolutely. And you're clearing things out to get ready to start something new. Ace of Wands. And the thing is too, I mean, here's another date for you that might be important. Uh, the 13th of May, actually, wait a minute, 14, 15th, excuse me, the 15th of May. Mercury goes direct the 14th, the 15th. Jupiter will be on the degree of the full, uh, the new moon solar eclipse in Aries that happened on the 20th of April. Mercury will have just gone direct and the North node is, is very close. It's not ex going to be exact to Jupiter yet, but Jupiter will conjunct the North node as well. End of May into June. So, um, the fourth, the 15th could also bring some sort of interesting news for you as well with Jupiter triggering that new moon and Aries point. So look to that day as well, Scorpio. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see what else we have for you. Here we go. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. We have number two, divine will and peace. Let go of the need to prove yourself. Surrender to gentleness. Okay. Let go of the need to prove yourself. Surrender to gentleness. Yes. The only person you have to prove yourself to is yourself. That's all. You got this. Whatever this situation it is, is going on. You're wrapping it up. You're dealing with it. And you're going to bring peace to your life because you are dealing with it. You're, you're really, I think, having also a dose of reality, you know, with this situation. That full moon lunar eclipse, you know, full moons, as we know, illuminate things. The big spotlight. You know this. You know you don't want to give your energy to this particular situation anymore. But I think that you've gotten also stuck in that in a sense because... You're not seeing the other possibilities. And this is, this is the thing. Again, Jupiter is going to be positioning. You know, you got to position yourself and get ready for Jupiter. And this is a beautiful, promising, important change of a potent, potent new seed that will bring all sorts of a new chapter beginning for you. But the old's got to go first. This is really the theme of of the first half of May. Scorpio, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you with these energies. I'd love to know. I love you guys. Take care. I'll see you again soon. Stella Wild.
signing out.